On the previous lesson, we spoke about the system schematics of the fire protection common to nearly all aircraft. On this lesson, we shall be comparing the fire systems model placed in the IATC for training purposes and the stuff out there in the real world. In the first part, we will let Mr. Kuduf tell us about what he has and then we will compare. Okay, this is the controlling panel and the cockpit, but this control panel we have here is only for the training panel right here. But in the cockpit, you have more features in the cockpit. But right now, the one we have here, just here is the master switch. You turn the master switch, it will give you a green light. Means now your panel is powered. Okay? The first thing we do always before we start an engine, an APU, what we have to do is we do a test. Okay? We test for the continuity of the, uh, of the detectors to make sure still they are serviceable. Also, we test the smoke, okay? As you hear this one, okay. this is the test of the smoke. All lights will go red, all lights will go red, and then after a while, in 20 seconds or, two, uh, or so, it will turn off, it means your system is good. Also, you, what we have to do is, we, we check here, we take a test. Here we test in the engine, okay? The engine, I test in the engine means each engine, the continuity is perfect. We tell us that, again I will push again. This is it, all right? So it means all the system, all, not the indication now, all the detector system is intact and ready to go. All the CPs must be on, and, and this way your panel is ready. As you see here, you have the toggle switch. This is the toggle switch you use. Actually, it is guarded. All the time it is guarded, but during emergency and during fire, what we do is we cut off the safety wire, which is a copper, and then we open it. Here you have a toggle switch. If you push the toggle switch, what actually doing is you firing the bustle through the squib. So you're energizing the, the solenoid which burn out the diaphragm you have inside the, the, the bottle where it's holding the pressure or the, holding the engine. Okay, this is the one is it. And as you see here also, as I told you, this is for the smoke detector, we already done it. Okay. So uh, this about it as a matter of fact concern this panel, but actually in the aircraft we do when we do the test we have all the lights I mentioned early about the, the engines, the APU, the cargo, uh, all of them they will have a red light and they turn off in a few seconds. Okay? That's about the panel. The IATC representation of the aircraft anti-fire equipment is as good as it gets. The system shows detection loops, the bottle, the squib, and discharge nozzles. Pretty much honest-to-goodness cloning of the systems used on a real airplane. There's the single-engine fire indication for both engines, as well as the left and right engine loops shown in the IATC. Fire test on the aircraft is performed through the test button on the respective panel. Indications appear in the cockpit in form of both oral and visual warnings, a small demonstration of which is contained on the IATC training model. Fire bottles arm and discharge the agent once the guarded fire and squib discharge push buttons are depressed for both engines, APU and cargo compartments on an aircraft. The guarded switch is also seen on the IATC model. Laboratory smoke test is conducted through the aircraft MCDU or the Multifunctional Control Display Unit cross-checked at the cockpit, forward and aft cabin attendant stations and just outside the laboratory itself. A master warning and master caution goes off in the cockpit and the first sense of fire in the laboratory. Since it matches the idea to an aircraft fire system and gives a fair initial learning to a student, the training model placed at the IATC does well on the teaching value and gives a fair understanding of what it is like in the real world 
hence making for a fine platform to start at and expand from into greater quest for knowledge and understanding of the aircraft fire protection system.